This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Oh, hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I am Courtney Eck. And I'm Sadie Eck. And we're sisters, and we talk about murder twice a week. And one time of the week it's free, and this is that time. <laughs> <laughs> the other time it's not very expensive, but that's right. a Patreon thing. We'll, we'll get to that later on in the episode. In the meantime, <laughs> we're going to tell you about something probably pretty gruesome, right? Yeah. Yep. Pretty gruesome. <sighs> All right. What are we talking about tonight? We are talking about the murder of Mary Whelan. Okay. I'm ready. Good. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Right around midnight on March 1st, 2001, 29-year-old Dublin resident Colin Whelan called 999. He told the dispatcher he needed an ambulance after his 27-year-old wife, Mary, fell down the stairs. Uh Uh-oh. A staircase. Yeah, it's the Irish staircase. The Irish staircase. I don't know how you say staircase with an Irish accent. (laughs) When asked if she was conscious, he replied, quote, I don't think so. What can I do? I don't think she's breathing. Whalen claimed Mary was still not breathing even after performing CPR. Quote, there's nothing. Will the ambulance be long? He pleaded. If you ring the guards or something, they might know. When paramedics arrived, they immediately questioned Whalen's story. They found Mary at the bottom of the stairs. Her body was wrapped in a quilt from the couple's bed, and a bloody towel was laying near her head. The position of Mary's body was not consistent with someone who had fallen down the stairs, and they knew that Waylon had not performed CPR because of the angle of Mary's head and the absence of blood on his face from hers. Not going so good for you so far, buddy. She was cold to the touch, and none of their attempts to resuscitate her worked. As they tried to help her, one paramedic remembers Waylon asking, quote, is she dead, without any emotion. Hmm. They rushed Mary to the nearest hospital, where she was pronounced dead on arrival. Poor Mary. Within minutes of Mary's arrival, doctors also became suspicious of his story. The injuries Mary was presenting were not consistent with a fall. The doctors who tried to resuscitate Mary noticed marks on her neck and chest. At one point, when Waylon bent over, a nurse could see down his shirt and also notice scratch marks on his chest. Oh boy, here we go. Mm-hmm. When she asked him about his wounds, he told her, quote, Mary must have flailed out at me at the bottom of the stairs. Mm-hmm. Likely the, story, bub. Mm-hmm. The nurse decided to call the Gardai, which is what the Irish call their police. I was wondering Just, about that earlier. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Stands for the Guardians. That's way fucking cooler. Mm-hmm. I know. Right? <laughs> I'm glad you didn't know that either. I didn't know that. I was like, oh. I never heard that in my life. Yep. When the pathologist performed the autopsy on Mary's body, she found a number of other injuries as well. Most suspicious to her was the fact that Mary's tongue was three times its normal size. Oh. Yeah. The blood vessels in her eyes had burst and there appeared to be a burn mark on the side of her neck, which looked like it came from a ligature. I mean, from falling down the stairs. Right. Clearly. Mary was also lacking any head injuries that would be consistent with a fall down the stairs. Oh, boy. She had no doubt that Mary had been murdered. Her cause of death was strangulation. Hospital staff notified the authorities. Mary was raised in Stanmullen County, Meath, Ireland, which is 35 kilometers or 21 miles north of Dublin. She was described as a, quote, happy and jolly girl who grew up as the only daughter amongst her five brothers. Badass. Mm Mm-hmm. She was usually quiet and reserved, a laid-back sort of person, but could also be very funny and quick-witted. My favorite type of person. (laughs) No, I like I'm kind of dull and slow. (laughs) In 1993, Mary met Colin Whalen at a local pub where she worked. Mary fell for Waylon immediately, and the two started dating. Waylon was born into a, quote, decent middle-class family from one of the better suburbs of Dublin. 
He owned his own IT company and provided services to the IT department of the Irish Permanent, which is a bank and mortgage company, mm-hmm. for more than nine years. So a total square. Just total square. Nerdy square. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mary's mother, Marie, said Wayland was her daughter's first and only boyfriend and the, quote, only mistake Mary ever oh, made. Oh, God, please. Yeah. God, Jesus, universe, everyone let my nephews marry people who are not the only mistakes they ever make. Seriously. Oh, please, God and Jesus, let my sons not be the mistake that <laughs> make. That's a very <laughs> diplomatic and kind thing for you to say for their future partners. Oh, I just... No, I know, I, I know, know but... sons uh, to be the problem. Well, yeah, I, I mean, good for you for recognizing yes. that they could be a problem. <laughs> not that I think that yes, they're going to be. They are white be. boys yeah. at this yeah. Or maybe straight. <laughs> no, I'm know. fully I aware. They, I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, we'll maybe. see. We'll see. They can decide. No, I think we should force them to be one way or another. <laughs> if mom and dad had pressured me a little yes. bit harder, I would have been much more straight. I mean, comp- You're right. The, yeah. Clearly. It's no, this let me run all willy nilly in here. I landed in homosexuality, so. That's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They tried to bring Waylon into the family, treat him like another son, but they didn't like the way he treated Mary. He was controlling of her, telling her what to wear, would openly ogle other women around her, and refused to, quote, return her affections. Fuck this guy. Gross. He's gross. He's really gross. The couple was together until 1995, when they, quote, hit a bad patch, but then got back together after a few months. In 1997, Waylon purchased a house in Clonard Street, Balbriggan. Good job. I like the name. Thanks. I like the sound of Clonard Street. At Clonard Street. Something Balbriggan. really satisfying. I didn't mean to that. put a question at the end of that, Balbriggan, but maybe I'll <laughs> leave it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you can leave it. It's fine. I think anybody outside of that, outside of Ireland saying but that would have put a question mark at the end of it. I too. think there's probably a lot of harder G's in there, but I'm it doing sounded, my best. It sounded pretty cute. Thanks. From a relative... Oh, oh, okay. So he purchased this house from a relative in 1997. Got it. Got it. On Clenard Street. Uh, and in 1998, the couple got engaged. They were married in 2000, just six months before Mary was murdered. Oh, no. Yeah. Newlyweds. Yes. but And had been dating for a long time. A very long time, but newlyweds. Still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You... There's, I mean, it's so cliche, but it is, getting married is, is different if you're not a yep. murdering sociopath, right. you know, like you go through Definitely. a whole new thing after you get married. And yes. if you don't, if you're somebody who's recently married and not going through that thing, maybe you should reconsider <laughs> your marriage. <laughs> totally. I don't know. It completely changes everything. It's really weird. Yep. Yeah. No, you don't think it will and it, and it does. It totally does. Makes it much, much worse. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's awful. It's like kind of burny and itchy and really scary. and uh. like she's Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It's wonderful. No, it's Guys, wonderful. It's yeah. wonderful. On their wedding day, Mary's family said she was extremely nervous and wouldn't smile. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Before she walked into the church, she even burst into tears and had to take a moment to collect herself before oh, going in. God. How old was she? She was 27. Mm-hmm. In the wedding videos, she looks miserable. There's a um, actually very well done hour long episode about this case mm-hmm. available on YouTube and totally worth watching. There's a lot of video, home video and like wedding videos of them. Mm-hmm kind of like helps paint that picture totally her family believed at the time that she was really missing her father who had died a few years before her wedding but Mm -hmm. now they wonder if she knew something was wrong with the man that she was planning to spend the rest of her life with god at the time of her death mary worked in a solicitor's office and was well liked by her co-workers Mm mm-hmm When asked about the night her daughter died, Marie remembered arriving at the Beaumont Hospital around 1 a.m. Quote, I walked up to Colin and he was sitting with his head in his hands and I said, how's Mary? He just said she was dead, just like that. I couldn't get over it. I'll never forget the way he answered me. He was just sitting there. I was looking at everyone else roaring and crying. I didn't know what to think, she said. 
Uh, no. No. You know, it's always that. Like, I feel like recently we did a story with the mom and the killer. When they can be so cold to the family, too. Just like, eh, she's dead. Ah, like, uh, yeah. It's like her daughter. Her only daughter. Exactly. I would, be, even if I didn't care, I'd be like, I am so sorry to tell you yes. this. Yeah. Like, like, yes. No, she's dead. Ugh. Ugh. When the guard eye were called to the hospital, they interviewed Waylon right away to get his account of what happened to Mary that night. He told them that he and Mary went to see their homeopath to start a detox program to help Mary lose weight. Oh, I ugh, ruin, mm -hmm. smash, <laughs> fuck that. No, I know. Afterward, they went home and started watching TV. Mary decided to go upstairs to take a shower, and a few minutes later, Waylon heard thump, thump, thump from the other room. When he got up to see what had made the noise, he found Mary at the bottom of the stairs unconscious. I'm so, so mad. Mm -hmm. A guard eye asked Waylon for the keys to his house, and they secured the crime scene. Inside, they found blood spatter upstairs in the master bedroom and on the upper landing of the stairs. They also found a bathrobe in the bedroom with blood on the middle of the belt, which was in the loops of the robe. They also seized the phone that Waylon used to call 999 with. Testing would later show no blood or any other kind of DNA on the phone from Mary, indicating that Waylon had not given his wife CPR the night she died. Mm -hmm. As they looked into Waylon's financial records, authorities discovered in June of 2000, as Mary was busy preparing for the wedding, Waylon was busy doubling their life insurance policy. Every damn time. Every damn time. If one of them were to die, the other would receive 400,000 pounds. This policy was, according to the independent financial advisor, quote, inappropriate and highly questionable. <laughs> they seized Waylon's computers, including the one used for work. There they learned Waylon was a longtime visitor of dating and casual encounter websites. And knew that was coming. Mm -hmm. He posted his details on a number of sites hoping to find casual sex. This went on for years before his marriage and continued until Mary's death. He would claim to play rugby, that he was in a band, that he was renovating an old house, <laughs> that he traveled to music festivals, <laughs> and he even superimposed his head on a picture of a male model. <laughs> okay, that, good, good work, good work. Yeah. If you're going to be a scumbag, just take it all the way. Just Seriously. Take it all the way. Seriously, you know, God, take your notes for they will chill the dating right? website we're going to make. <laughs> this is my face on like Chrissy Teigen's face. Chris, right. Chrissy Teigen's body. <laughs> it's like not the skin, same skin tone at all. Right. But... <laughs> at the end of 2000, Waylon, whose screen name was, quote, <laughs> Celtic Tackle, I start kind of into it again. <laughs> very mixed feelings about all this. Uh, he started contacting a Welsh woman named Helen, who was recently divorced and whose mother had just died. She was terribly lonely and really needed a friend. They started emailing every day. The emails turned into daily phone calls, and the friendship turned romantic. Leave Helen alone! No. Waylon even came up with a pet name for himself that he wanted <gasps> Helen to call him. Oh god, what is it? Furry Bear. <laughs> He just lost me, Waylon. I was on board with Celtic Tackle. I was <laughs> I'm going to bring you back you. here. I'm getting ready to bring you right back. Yes. On Valentine's Day 2001. And remember, so this is Valentine's Day, February 14th. Mm -hmm. Mary, let's not forget Sweet Mary, was murdered sometime February 28th or March 1st. Mm -hmm. So two weeks later. But on Valentine's Day of 2001, Waylon sent Helen a 15 verse poem. <gasps> Are you going to read us a verse? Just the first verse. Yes. It started, Mr. Bear's Ode to a Welsh Bird. Yep. Hey, Helen, I think I may know why I always think of you so. Whether it's night or whether it's morn, if my heart feels high or even forlorn. Yep. That's how he starts this poem. <laughs> I wish Ladies. I had all of it. That's all I could find. <laughs> I, like, I just, I know it was a different time. And I know she was going through a lot, but I, uh, how embarrassing to receive that poem. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? How are you yes. like, 
Yep, I love this guy. This guy's the one for me. You know, I remember in middle school, I had like a little middle school boyfriend and he yep. wrote me a poem. Yep. And I remember reading it and feeling so embarrassed for him that I could barely sit still. Like I, it, you know, yeah, not that yes. it was like anything serious anyway, but after that I was like, I can't, I can't yes. going out with him or whatever. <laughs> it's a physical reaction. I was dating yeah. a guy when I was a kid too, and super good looking too. He was homeschooled. So I don't think he, you know, it was like, <laughs> he didn't realize he had options. Um, very beautiful, <laughs> smelled good, like kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And he wrote me a poem and I was like, yeah, done. I, I'm so embarrassed. I can never <laughs> take you seriously. Yeah. Not that I didn't write garbage poetry. I wrote the world's worst poetry, but right. I didn't give it to people. I just kept it to myself. No. Right. Yes. Yes. So unfortunately, sweet Helen had the opposite reaction. And after receiving this amazing poem, <laughs> she likes animal based poetry. Yeah. She decided that she wanted to meet him. Mm. Quote, I really wanted to see Colin and finally see a picture of the real man and not the model. So at least she knew that the picture he posted was fake. <laughs> no. From this day on, I could not stop thinking about Colin. I could say I was now in love with him. Oh boy, Helen. Yep. They made plans to meet on March 2nd, one day after Mary was murdered. Oh no. On the day Mary was killed, Waylon was emailing Helen, telling her he was in Germany for work. Quote, he said he hated the Germans, poked fun at the way they dressed, and all the time he was sat in his office, Helen said. Mm. He also mentioned to her he was about to come into a huge sum of money, 400,000 pounds. Oh my god, oh my god, this guy is such an idiot. He sucks. He stopped communicating with her on March 1st and never showed up at the airport as planned on March 2nd. Helen would later learn just how big a bullet she dodged. Oh, thank god. Yep. Authorities didn't just find Waylon's internet dating history. They also found he had spent months searching for terms like, mm -hmm. quote, loss of consciousness, <sighs> sudden, sudden loss of consciousness, death by strangulation, choking, smothering, how long to take to die for asphyxiation, lack of oxygen to the brain, locking windpipe and blocking the air supply. Um, you know what I have to say to that? Tell me. Mm -hmm. you there know what we that are is? at the forensic, forensic amusement park. Amusement park full of forensic evidence. <laughs> what the fuck? Locking windpipe, blocking the air supply. I mean, it was. I forget how many they said. Oh it was God. like twenty. You know, like twenty-two searches. How how long ago was this again? What's the year? Two thousand. Two thousand one. So yeah, I could like I could see internet. not knowing that people could. Anyway, I'm not. Well, he was an IT guy, and they did say that. Oh he my deleted, god, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he did delete the hard drive or whatever, but not well enough that they couldn't recover it. Because <sighs> he was so. a fucking narcissist and thought he was just going to mm -hmm. get away with it and mm -hmm. push her down the stairs, and nobody would ever be the wiser because he's a dick. They also found in his search history an extensive research into a North Carolina serial killer, mm -hmm. Henry Louise Wallace. I don't know who that is who would strangle his victims with a cord that was wrapped in a towel to minimize the bruising on their neck. Oh, no. And then he would wrap their bodies in a blanket to keep them warm longer to throw off the time of death. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, I was like, oh, I've never heard of him. I looked him up. He was fucking awful, and I will never cover that case. Ever. Really? <laughs> I was going to oh say, maybe I'll do it next, but... Yeah. It's a, I mean, no, he's, I forget how many victims, but it's like more than 10. And the things he did to those women are just like, <gasps> it's fucking awful. Oh no. no. So Colin was going to maybe do this again and again, get more of that insurance cash. Could be. Yep. With a plethora of evidence against him, the Gardai arrested Waylon for the murder of Mary on April 10th, 2001. While awaiting trial, Waylon was allowed out on bail. He had to hand over his passport and sign into the Gardai station every day. A year passed without incident, and then on March 12, 2003, Waylon's car was found on the Upper Cliff Road at Houth Head, which is a stunningly beautiful, rugged cliff that sticks out into the ocean. Mm -hmm. Inside the car, they found Waylon's personal belongings and an empty bottle of gin on the passenger seat. Uh-oh. 
Even after a major sea, air, and land search was carried out, there was no trace of Waylon. <gasps> did he really do it, or did he stage it? Some believed he'd taken his own life, but not <gasps> Mary's family or the lead detective in the case. They were convinced it was his attempt to fake his own death and flee the country. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Oh, no. A year passed and authorities were unable to find Waylon until July 2004, when an Irish couple on holiday started up a conversation with a bartender at a local tourist hotspot on the Spanish island Mallorca. <gasps> he did a full Shawshank redemption. Full Shawshank. Shh, that is so cliche. Mm hmm. It didn't oh my even, god! Like, dig a tunnel or have to crawl through poop tunnels. No, he didn't have to do anything. That motherfucker. I wish he had. I know. Yes, yeah, that would like make it smart slightly less. But mm -hmm. wow, man. Yeah. He told her his name was Martin Sweeney, and that he was a transplant from Ireland. Later, the woman was stunned when she recognized Wayland's picture in the newspaper covering mm -hmm. his case. She realized mm -hmm. he was the bartender she'd met and called the police. Wow, that is so lucky. <laughs> so lucky. Sure enough, it was him. It turns out Waylon stole his neighbor's identity. His neighbor was named Martin Sweeney. Oh my god. Uh, and applied for a passport in his name. Oh my god. When he got to Spain, he was vetted by the authorities there and given a national ID card upon his arrival so he could work. Waylon had made a life for himself. He managed to make a large group of friends and told his co-workers his parents were dead and that he had no family. He had a girlfriend and spent time doing drugs and sleeping with as many sex workers as he could. <laughs> Holy shit. I am so glad this guy didn't get to keep having this badass mm -hmm. life forever. Mm -hmm. Yep. On this wow. beautiful yeah, island. And actual, like, probably the most paradise of any paradise. Yeah. Wow. Arrangements were made to extradite Waylon from Spain. He later said that they were lucky to catch him because he had plans to move to Singapore a week after his arrest. Wow. Waylon finally went to trial in April 2005. As the trial got started, Waylon decided to change his plea to guilty. During the sentencing, the prosecution laid out what they believed happened to Mary the night she was murdered. On the night of February 28th, Waylon attacked Mary as she was getting ready for bed. Quote, mm -hmm. Coming from behind, he gripped her around the neck without a word and began strangling her. Mm. At some point, she was able to scrape her nails down his chest, which allowed her to break free and breathe. Waylon got a hold of her again and dragged her onto the bed, where she screamed at him to let her go. Ignoring her, he wrapped the dressing gown cord in a towel and began strangling her with it. How terrifying. Her face turned blue and blood came from her nose. She managed to scratch his chest once again, but her strength was leaving her and she slipped into unconsciousness. Mm. Waylon released her and retied the dressing gown. You know, he put it back in the loops. Mm -hmm. He then grabbed her arms and dragged her down the stairs, quote, like a rag doll. Oh my God. She grabbed at the wall on the way down, but paralysis was now setting in. After laying her out at the bottom of the stairs, Waylon waited for half an hour before fetching a towel to clean the blood from Mary's face and a quilt to keep her warm and disguise her time of death. He then called 999, pretended to give Mary CPR, and waited for the paramedics to arrive. God, imagine you're being murdered by your scumbag husband and being like, yep, I kind of saw this coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. God, that poor woman. Yep. Yeah, that's fucking awful. It's so awful. He was sentenced to life in prison for his crimes. Waylon's defense barrister read an apology to Mary's family on behalf of Waylon, saying, quote, I live with this regret and sorrow for the rest of my life. There are no words to explain my act. To Mary's mother, Waylon said, quote, I apologize for the protracted delay today, and I apologize for taking your daughter, friend, and soulmate so unnecessarily. No, you don't. You actually do nope. not. You don't. Not even for a fucking second. Not for one fucking second. You don't move to Mallorca and have sex with prostitutes and work at a bar and groovy groovy mm -hmm. if you give one shit about your wife that you killed. Nope. Also, you just don't kill your wife. First, that's the first step. <laughs> and God. Yes. Asked later about Waylon's apology, Mary's mother said, quote, He didn't write to me. He could have asked to speak to me Monday or yesterday. I wouldn't have minded for him to apologize to my face. He'll get out in so many years for good behavior. His family can visit him, bring him little gifts. 
talk to him and put their arms around him and give him a hug. But I haven't got that. I stand in a graveyard and that's it. Exactly. After he was sentenced, it came to light that Waylon had killed before. <gasps> On January 31st, 1997, Waylon drove his car into his neighbor's car and killed 61-year-old Elizabeth Murphy, who was the passenger in the car driven by her husband. Who no. Yeah. Waylon originally faced drunk driving charges, but was eventually convicted of careless driving and didn't face any jail time. What, what was the circumstance? What, do you know? Like, were they... I think that he was drunk and he crashed into his neighbor. Right. And so it her. wasn't like they were having a fight or they had some sort no. of feud and he bashed no, no, into No, 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 no. He just murdered her by being a fucking asshole who drinks and drinks drives. Drinks and drives. Yep. If he had been, if he had faced jail time... Mm -hmm. Uh, It might have saved Mary's life. Yep. During the victim impact statements, Mary's brother, Gerard, said, quote, Our family is living a life sentence since her murder and will always have to live with it. We won't get off for good behavior. Mary is gone forever and we can't run away. Mary won't be coming back. David, who's the twin brother of Gerard, addressed Waylon directly, but Waylon failed to meet his gaze, instead Mm -hmm. keeping his head down. Quote, On March 1st, 2001, you... Colin Whalen strangled Mary, and for that we'll never, ever, ever forgive you. You caused devastation to our family when you brutally strangled Mary, and you took a piece of us too. Then you fled the country, which shows you for the coward you are. You tried to rob us of justice. You thought you were above the law, but you are not. Justice has finally been done here today. Mary's only crime was loving you too much. No time in prison will ever be enough. The one thing you can't take away is the wonderful, cherished memories of Mary and the wonderful part she played in our lives. May she now rest in peace. Oh, God. What do you do? I I am so protective of the people that I love. Mm -hmm. I might actually kill somebody, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what I would do with those feelings inside of my body because they are fierce. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't. That's... You knew this guy. He was your fucking brother-in-law. Mm-hmm. What do you do with that? Yeah. They dated Betrayed your like, family. Like 10 years almost oh before she was murdered. God. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. It's awful. Is that the whole story? That's it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> that is the end. I mean, that is, that is all story. I have to say about that. That, that. is all I have to say about that. <laughs> I don't know if the I don't know if our reg crowd knows what I think that was from the yeah, Patreon episode, right? I know I can't dipshit murderer. No, it's, it's stupid murderer gave his statement at the end. He said, and that is all I have to say about that or whatever. <laughs> when he could have just stopped talking. Oh, um, right. <laughs> God, ugh, yeah, yeah, that shit haunts me. If I, mm mm, mm mm, you just don't get to do that to people. No, no. And I for just wonder, money, like, how for long? fucking money, ugh! Yeah. How long was he just stringing her along? Right, you know, because it just yep. doesn't seem like he ever really cared about her, and she was sweet enough, and like wanted to be loved and trusted yeah. him. And well, here's the thing about narcissists: like they use you until they don't need you anymore. And right. you know, she was. I'm sure she like cooked him food or something. You know, there's things mm-hmm. that he, she did for him that he liked and made his life better. And then as soon as he could get more out of her death, he did. Yeah. Because narcissists are the fucking worst. Well, mm-hmm. the third worst, but they're the fucking worst. <laughs> <laughs> well, he definitely was a sociopath too. Like, yes, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Ugh, gross. Good job telling Thank that you. story. Thanks. Fuck that guy. Yep. Damn. Well, damn it. Yep. I know. Let's bring Mary back, please. <sighs> All of them. Yep. All of the. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. It, that you know how you know how that shit pisses me off. Mm-hmm. Just shitty. Yeah, he's in that category. There's mm-hmm. sociopaths, narcissists, psychopaths, and then shitty. He's a shit. shitty one. Yeah, thinking about him like, oh, I'm going to go drive up on this cliff and I'm going to put this gin bottle here. <sighs> ugh, ugh, God. Like, shut up. Just stop. <laughs> Just well, stop. And the please. fact that you'd meet like an Irish couple in Mallorca and not be like, 
just pretend you're Spanish or Portuguese or something. You know, the fact just that he... Just keep your mouth shut. It, yes. That's what I mean. The fact that he's like, oh, yeah, this is my name, and I'm from Ireland, too, and da 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 and, Yep. You well, know, I think he even... So he started on the island. He, like, at first stayed away from the tourist spots, yep. like a smart fugitive. Yep. And then he got cocky. Right. And the bar that he worked at was, like, a, it was known to be a place that English and Irish tourists would go. Right. And he thought he could get away with it. And I think he even gave her his email address. Oh my God. On the, I don't know why I didn't write it down, but on the, um, the little documentary that I watched, pretty sure that the detective they interviewed said that he had struck up this conversation and said that he wanted something from Ireland or something. And was like, here's my email address. I forget the details exactly. But oh so when she <laughs> called it in and was like, I think this is your guy. She had his fucking email address. Oh my God. <laughs> Narcissism <laughs> is powerful. <laughs> so fuck yeah, uh, he, I mean, I love when narcissism and like ego is so powerful that it makes you a really, really bad criminal. And this is such a good example of that. Mm-hmm. Like, didn't even really try to cover up the murder very well. I mean, did some research, but then, duh, dude. Like, yes. <laughs> you know, like, didn't do that well. Didn't be a fugitive well. Mm-mm. Fuck you. Thank God. Thank God. But I could say that yeah. about every narcissist I've ever known, that they're just, they're not very good. They are, it really is. Their ego just is so powerful. Mm-hmm. They don't even really try. Nope. They're like, and now I'm taking advantage of you. You're like, God, yeah. uh, bless, stop, damn it. Please. <laughs> it's so obvious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, well, do you want to talk about cute names as a very abrupt transition to something Every else? Every day of my life, please. Yes. Um, I'll start with one. Uh, I think that this, uh, this name sounds kind of Irish to me, so I'll start with in honor of our Irish friends. Uh, and I'll stop saying that like that. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> Kenny, Kinney. Kenny, 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 <laughs> Kenny, somebody that Laura knows. <laughs> She's oh, like, but oh. she brought him up the other day and I was like, going on the list. Kenny, <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> just like our parents just lazy. Like, I don't you know. Our last know. name's Kenny. Let's name him Kenny. Name him Kenny. <laughs> I don't know. Like, what is the what is the purpose of it other than uh, to be ador- like adorable? I don't think they're trying to be adorable. They like raised horses and stuff, you know. Right, canny, canny. <laughs> um, Harry Wejaja, Harry Wejaja. <laughs> I everything about it's good. Harry Wejaja, <laughs> Harry Wejaja. Just take it wherever you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but fo- to follow that up, Sandy Bush. <laughs> yep. Um, this one's just cute. Spring Darling. Aww. My best friend growing up was Dawn Fields. So that's very similar. Uh-huh. Spring Darling. I never thought Dawn Fields was like that out there because, you know, if we were 13. Right. But yeah. kind of looking back, it is kind of a 90s sort of romance name, right? That yeah, really is. Like a, a scent. It would be an It's a name. scent. Exactly. Yep. Comes with a room spray and like a body oil too. Dawn mm-hmm. Fields. Mm-hmm. Um, and last but not least is Sunshine Fister. <laughs> so there yes. you go. <laughs> it was a good week for names. Like people bring them in. <laughs> Tsunami, man. I'm just so yeah. glad. And I don't, I posted it in our stories the other day, but our darling Louise, our listener from the UK found a screenshot of Cindy Pancake from the episode of whatever, you know, Dateline, I think it was, of her from the Grabby story. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I don't even, it was like the Faces of ID channel or something. There was right. no caption or anything. It was just her, <laughs> my girl Cindy I mean, Pancake. With what the else lower is there thirds. to say? There's no, well, nothing else to say. You it's don't need really, a caption. She really, speaks for herself. She really does. Cindy Pancake. Our queen goddess, our angel. God, God like, I hope that this... Get in touch with Cindy Pancake and get her to, like, autograph a picture for you for your birthday. Uh, I don't know why I'm it. giving this away. I don't know why I'm... I need to shut my mouth and keep my secrets. You do. One time, I love Timmy Capello from, um, oh my God, Lost Boys. Sorry, that took me a second. So in the scene from Lost Boys where the, <laughs> the oiled up guy, when they go to the beach uh-huh. uh, concert, 
and he's singing, I still believe, and he's fucking jamming with the saxophone, and he's <laughs> yes. oiled up with, like, a chain <laughs> around his neck and a mullet, uh-huh. and in our early 20s, I was like, wait a minute, rewind. I don't, how did I, how did I not remember this guy from this movie? Because <laughs> you're fuck is this? <laughs> Well, he's just amazing. T- shirtless, it's ripped as fuck. And we figured out who he was. His name was Timmy Capello, and he's a saxophone player. He toured with, like, um, Tina Turner, and, you know, he was hot shit in the 80s when saxophone was hot shit. And my roommates and best friends, I think I was, like, 26, tracked him down and got him to sign an autograph picture, which was, he obviously printed out on, like, an inkjet com- printer <laughs> that was running out of ink. So it's kind of like <laughs> the lines are in it and stuff. It's, like, a oh, very poor quality photo of himself and he signed it i still believe timmy capello uh, that was <laughs> spectacular yeah. it would only the only thing that would one up that gift is a signed autograph copy of cindy <laughs> pancake Let's see what i can do <laughs> <You're> right <laughs> uh i don't know how to start this conversation i'm sorry about your family's gruesome tragedy but my sister loves your name <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot. It actually She's started like connected to yeah. yeah. <laughs> sort of started a whole thing. Um, yeah, you're our goddess, our queen. Can you sign this autograph, this picture, please? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> should we do some shout outs? Yeah. Speaking okay. of names, thank you so much. To oh, these Karen. are our Patreon shout outs. Oh, I think I'm we, sorry. Yes. Yeah, no, just I don't know if we ever clarify <laughs> that. These are our new Patreon supporters. So. Yeah, you can be one of these. And we yeah. don't say your name. These aren't just random names that we read off every week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to Karen. Yeah, Karen. Not the bad kind, the good kind. Like no. you are. And it could be. It's C-A-R-Y-N. So it could. I'm reading it as Karen, but it could be. Could be. Karen. Karen. Yeah, I think it's Karen. Karen. <laughs> but a pretty way of spelling it. Very pretty way of spelling it. Maybe it, I, Irish. Could be. Scottish. Just cute. Probably just from the land of cute. Yep. Thank you so much to JB. Yeah, JB stands for just beans. <laughs> <laughs> just beans. Uh, thank you so much to Michelle M. Michelle is a model. It's in parentheses really small. <laughs> is, a, a, is a model. Yes. Model. <laughs> And last but not least, thank you to one of our yearly subscribers. Yes. She has a lot of confidence in us to continue for a year. Thank you for that boost. Uh, thank you so much to Julie H. Julie, hello. hello. Committed to this podcast and we love you. We love you so much. So much. And that's all I got. Yeah. How's everybody feeling? We've had a little coup. Oh, yeah. Oops. We haven't talked about the coup. Motherfucker. Yeah. What I do, anyway. When I let myself go to places that are scary. Yep. Can I do anything about it right this second? If right. so, then do it. And if not, then just set it aside. Mm-hmm. And don't let it ruin your life. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and also, I think the thing that we've learned in the last couple of months is that there are more good people in this country and world and bad people Mm -hmm. and i think that's sort of official we can quantify that now we can see that that's the case that people are raging against absolute bullshit and Mm -hmm. so yeah it's been a lot Mm -hmm. (laughs) i I had an opportunity to go see uh obama's goodbye speech four years ago and that came up in my feed yesterday exactly four years ago today and and I that was just because I have a friend who has a friend who's rich. That's the only way I got to go do that. I, I'm not <laughs> nearly important enough. But I was like, holy shit, man. We have been through it. It is, like, I know this, but when you think about everything that's gone mm-hmm. on, every, all of it, it's mm-hmm. remarkable mm-hmm. that we're still standing. And not only are we still standing, but we're, like, rallying and demanding change and demanding all kinds of things. Yeah, uh, quality and... Uh, uh, fuck, yeah. And some, you know, plenty of bad things have come out of it too. But mm-hmm. I I believe in people, in my heart. And like, I really think that we have a fucking shot at 
actually making this world a better place. And I know there's going to be a ton of bullshit and a ton of hurt feelings, but I feel hopeful for the first time in a really fucking long time. I feel very hopeful and, and disgusted and fucking overwhelmed and mortified, but I'm, we've earned a little bit of brightness Mm -hmm. and I'm just going to fucking revel in that for a little while. And then yeah. like my buddy James said today, and then do that for two weeks and then let's get the fuck back to work. And I was right. like, yes, of course. But yeah. it's okay to feel just really fucking happy and hopeful yeah. when you have that opportunity. So I am going to. Yep. I remember a conversation I had with my grandmother. I mean, it was the middle, it was probably like six years into Obama's presidency. So, you know, like it had been a mm-hmm. while and she and I love to talk politics. It's our, that's our jam. Yeah. And I wasn't nearly as like plugged in then nobody Uh, was not even a little no and but i remember like us kind of going back and forth and she was like what is it going to take for people to wake up and like chain like the the government's never going to do anything if we stay deadlocked like we are you know yeah sort of like we still are yeah nothing changes because nobody's fucking doing anything and we're so worried about getting reelected. and yeah and i i remember having this feeling of like it's just gonna be like this forever yeah and then it wasn't and then i was like fuck maybe i want it to be like it was forever (laughs) oh yeah but then realizing that we have to like something like this has to happen for actual change to occur yes and break out of the you know like that's what I, i keep thinking of it's just like this we're cracking the mold for like yeah breaking out of this fucking stupid ass system we've been living in for decades and yep. you know please can we just get through it and get to the other side and yeah. have like medicine for everybody that's <laughs> free and like, yes we got we, we need some equality up in this united states of america so we certainly do and yeah we've said yep. it before between the two of us like trump was a fucking nightmare short term but i think long term i mean there are going to be some residual things from his right administration for a very long time but long term this was i think in a lot of ways one of the best things that's happened to our generation Mm -hmm. you know what i mean gotta wake up yeah it needed it's just the way that cycle of the life of the world works i wish we could get there without it but i just don't think that we would have our generation no concept i saw some Mm -hmm. meme and i'm gonna miss completely misquote it because i don't remember exactly what it said but it was like me in 2016 what's a house majority right (laughs) me in 2021 (laughs) well if they get 42 and 9 2 you know yeah (laughs) suddenly we're all (laughs) constitutional scholars and fucking yeah seriously virility experts and like (laughs) i know it's really true like but if i I was watching c-span this morning um to see what the house was gonna do you know like yeah i didn't know if they were gonna I didn't know. So I was watching yeah. C-SPAN to find out what was happening exactly. Yeah. And it was like the shortest, most dry little session ever. And I was like, hmm, God, I just watched C-SPAN. I was going to say, I mean, I have a thousand other things going on in my life right now. But yeah. no, I took the half an hour out of my day to make sure I was like, paying oh, attention. God. Well, and you know that uh, they like t- a year and a half, two years ago, they like kicked the guy at C-SPAN awake and they're like, uh, dude, uh, we we have ratings. We need to do something. Like, he's like, fuck, it's just been on autopilot for this whole time. Like, oh no, people are paying attention. You know what yeah, I mean? Very, like, I mean, it's still very like the corn dry. cob, <laughs> the corn cob from the fucking CPS, run CPS in yeah. Florida, like also ran C-SPAN for like 25 <laughs> years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because nobody was watching it. I had like totally. five viewers. And now suddenly I'm sure they have you know, millions of viewers, people right. just actually tuning in to see what the fuck is that. Like, ah, oh, whoa, we are not prepared for this servers <laughs> crashing and fucking just absolute totally. Lord of the Flies chaos. It's like updating this tie from 1993. <laughs> exactly. Yes. It's like an yes. old AV closet from a, in a high school. That's what streamed C-SPAN for this. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Like, no, what? Yep. It's awesome. It's yes, awesome. It's it really awful. Is. And that's yeah. another thing I realized things can be, multiple things at the same time you know they they can be simultaneously awful and amazing and miraculous so i'm also allowing myself space to feel that way about things as they you know because i think we have this knee-jerk reaction to have an opinion about things and Mm -hmm. i'm learning more and more that i i have multiple opinions at the same time about things and 
I think that that will help us move forward. I'm seeing that a lot in my feed where people are like, you know, it's all, it's so many things simultaneously, you know, we need to allow humanity and nuance and all these different Mm -hmm. parts of (laughs) what it means to be a human being in a fucking society. It's very complicated and we need to allow room for that, uh, for, for things to be that complicated, you know, on, on every level. So, um, yeah, man, it's deep shit. I have conned some existential places. (laughs) 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 how much more knowledge can one person fucking carry a lot lot more yeah so it turns out there's endless amounts so yep keep it up everybody yeah in the meantime you can find us on instagram facebook and twitter at they will kill you can go to our website they will kill dot com and you can email us at they will kill podcast at gmail dot com don't forget the podcast part. That will send you nowhere without it. You will go nowhere without it. Yep. Uh, thank you, AJ Bergantz, for your music. Thank I was listening so to much. it the other day, and it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. We need and a full it's length. all because of AJ. Yeah, we need a full length version. That I song know. from Amelie came on a random mix of mine on Spot- not, like, Spotify. Is like, here's some vintage jams we think you'll like. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. What's this all about? And that song from Amelie, look it up. You'll remember it we, uh-huh. as soon as you hear it. It's so beautiful. Uh-huh. <laughs> we need an AJ Bergant's version of that, the Amelie okay. soundtrack. So I'm giving them like a year. They get, oh, yeah, they get it, when they're twins. Yeah. Right. So when the twins hit a year, when things mm-hmm. get like crazy in a different mm-hmm. way, all bets are off. Then, AJ. then I'm going to start pressuring AJ for a full length album of yep. the kill tunes. <laughs> yes. It's like Amelie for, free, for right? murder. <laughs> yes. I don't know who it benefits except for us. That's what's important. Well, everybody's ears in the whole entire world. That's who benefits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, anyway, thank you, AJ. Thank you we so much. You. And everyone, please rate, review, subscribe. Please. It's so fun. You have it's no so idea. Fun. Feed my Leo soul. I will work for compliments. Yes. That is not a joke. No. Keep it fueled. Yep. We'll still accept reviews from other podcasts <laughs> on accident. <Yeah. laughs> yep. It's just fun, man. It's a rush. Um, and remember... Um, today I learned that nacho fries from Taco Bell must be eaten on, dema- on arrival, oh, yeah. upon, like immediately oh, yeah. upon arrival. I yeah. ate my black bean quesarito, which oh, Sadie God, hipped me to. So you could buy it on the app. Only on the app. App it's, exclusive. <laughs> it's an app exclusive. I have a Taco Bell app as a result. Uh-huh. And yeah, I ate the quesarito and then I didn't want the fries right away, but I fucking love those things. And they're, you know limited time only uh, i tried to bust them back out an hour and a half later Whoa. no the no, cheese fries first doesn't hold quesarito up. will hold i know i know but i was so hurt i was emergency hungry and i didn't yeah. think the fries were gonna do it and yeah. i was like driving from one thing to another thing and i had a very yeah. limited amount of okay. time so i went right. for the more substantial option less and- messy mm-hmm but I didn't get that like zingy sweet hot mm. deliciousness of the fry I'm so disappointed for you. It was There's sp- nothing worse than a soggy fry. <laughs> you, no, you know what's I mean, worse than a soggy fry? Like, a soggy nacho fry. <laughs> it's the worst thing you've nothing ever experienced. Nothing worse. The cheese sort of like cubes <laughs> up too. Uh-huh. It's just sort of like separates. Ugh, gross. Not separate, but it's not juicy and not juicy, creamy and cheesy and you got to don't ever make that mistake. I'm <laughs> What if Taco Bell was our new sponsor? <laughs> God, so happy would be Megan, our editor. Oh my uh, God! Yeah, <laughs> brought to you by Taco Bell. Ding, bing. Well, and I was listening. I had headphones in when I ordered the food on the app, and it goes bong after you uh-huh. place your order. Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I tell you a, a secret? That's yes. not a secret. Ryan won an Xbox through Taco Bell. Oh, They're yeah. like win an Xbox. He actually won one. And when you turn it on, it it makes that bong soy- noise. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, man. So. The bong noise is like the the um, Skype song. Like every, <laughs> I mean, just put the Skype song on and tell me you don't fucking love that song. The yeah, talk no. about bong is just similar. when we moved away from recording on Skype. I was a little sad. Because I know of that. Yeah, but 
the, f- the positive side of that is that people's ears won't bleed when they listen to our podcast. It's <laughs> true. Anyway, yep. Anyway, happiest day of Ryan's life when he won an Xbox through Taco Bell. <laughs> I don't even play Xbox, but I would just turn it on. Bong. Yeah, we don't actually play it really ever at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to win, though. Yeah. Everybody loves a winner. We love you, We winners. love you guys. Good. You're the winners. Bye. You're the winners. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>